Nerds Out of Water is a podcast brought to you by myself, Michael Lobb, and David Camus. We're two good friends who have partnered on and off in different companies for the last 20 years. Michael runs TeamScale, who helps scaling companies keep their technologies on track. Don't get him started on Industry 4.0. And David runs One Bright Cloud, where he heads up a team of techs and futurists. They look at autonomous vehicles, AI, and digital transformation. We challenge our own perspectives, um, and we try to see things from each other's perspective. You don't need to agree with what we're saying, but after you've listened to this podcast, we hope you'll have an idea. Michael, my guest today is someone whom I respect greatly. He's built an amazing business across three continents while raising four very young children with his unbelievable and incredible wife. I first met him while he was working uh, doing cost analysis on a multi-million dollar program that I was leading in early 2000s. He left me to start up his own dog business, a dog family holiday home, and then he moved into Neon Signs, and that was in 2015. Neon Poodle has been highlighted in the L magazine. Uh, L is a worldwide lifestyle magazine for those non-nerd people out there. Wait, With so it's mandate, got like it's got like um, uh, articles about celebrities and stuff. It's a celebrity. Yes, it's a very well-known magazine. Something that you and I probably wouldn't be in. Not yet. I don't think that I've ever read that magazine. <laughs> And with his mandate, life is colourful, he is here today. I'm really proud to introduce my good friend, director, owner and entrepreneur, Jason Gibson. You're listening to Nerds Out of Water with Michael Love and David Kemis. I'm really proud to introduce my good friend, director. He's an owner and entrepreneur, Jason Gibson. Yay. Hello. <laughs> hey, how are you? Very well, very well. Very busy. Been good. You're good? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad to hear you. It's been, it's been really hard over the last few months for everyone. Um, I hope your family and you're, you're very well. Yeah, we, we are. Um, we are very well. It's just um, the cha- having the challenge of um, having the kids home all the time is, is an interesting, uh, interesting beast to tackle. Are both your families in Australia or are you spread around the world? Uh, no, we're, we're both in Australia. Um, so we're lucky we have a bit of support to, uh, to help us out with the kids. Because, um, yeah, having four of them is, is quite a challenge. Yep, yep. I, I'll repeat that. He's got four, the same as me, before anyone else puts me out of it. Yeah. And then I took on an extra three, so I've got seven. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jason, I've known you for quite some time. You've got a large tech background, um, and I spoke about the big programs of work we were working on back in the early 2000s. How the hell do you go from the big programs to dogs to custom neon? Look, it's um, it's it's a it's a interesting question. We've um, it's I've always had um, ever since my my father sort of uh, instilled in me that we've always had a bit of an entrepreneurial background. So, um, whilst I've always been doing IT projects and um and and, and rolling these things out, I've always had the sort of um, the back of my mind always wanted to do something and work for myself, um, and which which I have been doing on the side uh, for many many years. So. Um, I, I guess it's um, it's it's been an interesting ride, that's for sure. We've been through a few different businesses now, um, in from pet sitting through to um, to custom neon um, and being one of the biggest neon providers in the world. Um, tell us what what is cust- what, what is custom what is neon poodle? How how good are you? Well, um, neon poodle is um, basically we provide um, custom uh, custom neon or even um, uh, stock neon to a lot of uh, a lot of people around the world. Um, we started out uh, five, six years ago when um, my wife had an idea um, to uh, to get her, our daughter's name in neon and uh, to use it as an interior on our wall. And um, we searched and, and looked and, and asked many questions to many different neon companies around the world, or even uh, a lot in Australia. And we couldn't source um, couldn't source it. Um, majority of these guys were dealing with big commercial jobs. They didn't want to speak to someone that's only going to spend a small amount of money. Um, so we, you know, I, I had took it on as a challenge to to find that and source that myself, um, uh, which we did. 
Um, I found a, a nice LED neon product um, that produced the same, um, if not better, uh, functionality than, than traditional glass neon, uh, a lot safer. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was just um, it was a lot easier for, for me to produce that um, for my daughter's name. And, um, and that's where it sort of started. We, we rolled the ball and, and put a, put, started a company up and then put a start social media, um, start pushing heavily into social media. And, and that's where we sort of uh, built this brand, uh, which is now across three different continents. Uh, we're in the UK, US and um, also Australia. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's it's um it's been a very interesting uh, a very interesting ride. We've been through a lot of um, challenges with the product, and but we've you know we've come out the other side. I think uh, we are one of the biggest in the world now, uh, which provides a lot of services to people uh, at home uh, that want to get their names in in lights or even businesses and commercial work. Um, we do a lot of commercial work as well. So yeah, it's just um, we provide it to anyone anyone that wants a bit of their the bit of lighting in their house. Um, that's what we do. So these are neon lights like the tubes we have in multicolours in the shapes of names and figures and anything you can think of, is it? Yeah, anything you can think of. Um, we can do anything, uh, any names, logos, um, yeah, any, any, any sort of weird or wonderful um, uh, name or word. Uh, we've, we've done many, many different uh, words that I probably couldn't repeat on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> You can say whatever you like. It's fine. <laughs> I, I have to say, I did see one of yours in, I think, the US, and it said, <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's been a, there's been a few of those um, around for, it becomes a quite a common little thing we create for weddings. Um, people tend to use the F word quite a bit, uh, which is quite nice. You know, <laughs> it's, it's how to express yourself. <laughs> it is. Apart from, um, I mean, you you obviously are on Instagram, but I don't see you on a lot of other social media platforms. How do you get your message out there to the to the masses? Look, we when we first started, Instagram was was the be and all and, and end all because basically we were providing a service um, that people needed to see. You know, it, it, this product wasn't around, so we needed to put photos out there to to show people how to use it. Uh, what it looked like, um, and Instagram was the platform um, that, that gave us that opportunity to to really push hard and and, and show the masses how um, how this thing looks. Um, we've we're not heavy into to Facebook and and all the other new um, uh, new social media platforms. That's probably just due to time, to be honest. It's it's only um, there's only a few of us. My wife and I are primarily the only the ones that work in the business uh, with a few outsourced um, assistants, um, but. We just haven't had the time to really push into those markets, and I, and I don't think we really need to. We've grown, we've grown a business, um, you know, that sells thousands upon thousands a year um, of custom neon signs just through through primarily the Instagram source. Um, so it's, it seems to be working, and it's not something I really want to change at the moment because I can't invest the time into anything else. Yeah. You mentioned that you outsource. I, I mean, I've been in the outsourcing industry for a, for a relatively long time now. Um, in Vietnam, Philippines, and and also working with a lot of outsourcing providers in India, um, and they're mainly for tech projects, obviously. But you, you, how, how did how does that help you? And how do how do you use outsourcing to make Neon Poodle a better a better product? Look, um, uh, we we went down the uh, the outsourcing path just because um, we've had staff in the past, and it, it does complicate things um, quite a bit having to to worry about um, uh, people and and and, and managing the um, the wage things in Australia and, and all that sort of stuff. So we decided to sort of stick to an outsourcing model. Um, look, we, we, we get graphics designers um, on demand when I need them. They could be from Sri Lanka, India, it doesn't really matter, um, as long as they can produce what we need. Um, we use, um, I use a graphics designer in, um, in China that assists me with the designing of our, um, our custom neons. Um, and I've also, uh, we custom had custom built software for our website, um, for, for the uh, neon designer, basically. Um, and I'm project managing that on a daily basis. I'm still using that in my IT brain to, to build something that is far, far <laughs> superior than anything out, out there in the, um, in, in the universe. It's. Um, so I'm investing a lot of time into that because it actually saves me a significant amount of time um, on my admin work. Um, so you know, I, and I've, I speak daily to my um, uh, to my team um, in India, um, which build this on the on, build this for me. So it's just um, that's just a work in progress. But that's using that that IT brain that I had, uh, or IT skill that I've had yeah. to to 
provide what we need when we need. I use Freelancer and Elance and all those ones um, and Upwork uh, to provide those services. Yep. Awesome. Um, that, that, as, I, as I said, you, you, you're on three continents. You've got all of that outsourcing going on. Now, Michael and I, we play in Asia, Vietnam, New Zealand, and Australia. We've done, we find there's some issues going across borders and work style changes. What about you? How, how do you find the work style in the US and the UK and over here? Is there, are there any differences? Is there any one that works better for you or? Are they all the same for the neon sign business? Look, there is absolutely a huge difference, um, and we didn't we didn't really understand the difference until until we sort of started pushing into the UK and the US market. The differences in between um, uh, between Australia and the rest of the world. Um, there is, you know, like the UK market, for example, is very, very price sensitive. Australians seem to be tend to, to, to spend the extra money and, and they're happy to produce what they want based on, you know, if they've got the money to spend it. The UK is very price sensitive. So we've had to adjust our model over there a little bit to, to provide, uh, to meet their needs, um, uh, as well as the US. It's US is very similar as well. So they're very price sensitive. They, they want, um, you know, a big sign for, for less money than what we, we would in Australia. You know? So we've had to, it's been a challenge to adapt um, to to different markets, um, different um, yeah, different clients basically, um, because you know Australians are happy just to purchase online and move on, whereas the UK want a bit more hold hand, hand holding. They want phone calls, they want um, constant follow up and things like that. So it's it's been a challenge, um, and and we didn't really anticipate that when we first started these businesses in, in other continents. Um, so we we're lucky. We we're very fortunate that we actually moved. Um, over to Europe um, about three years ago and, and to completely understand because we tried rolling this business out three years ago in the UK and there wasn't a market for it, um, which was a real struggle for us because we just expected it would just be instant, you know, there would be a market straight away, but whilst we're there, we start, we'd be, you know, grow quite big. Um, but it really only has only sort of kicked off within the past six to 12 months, um, that market for us in the UK. Um, and US is also a little bit slower as well. So it's, it's, it's been interesting. It's, it's just we've had to adapt how we sell and, and market our product um, a lot differently to what we'd expect in Australia. Bloody awesome. So let me just get that right. You're saying the Americans are looking for more for less because I would have thought it would be the Aussies who are looking for more for less. Yeah, well, it's, we've, we've found that, you know, it, for, for an Australian for a wedding, they typically, you know, they can they can happy to drop um, $900 to, to $1,100 for a neon sign. But you're going into the US market and they're a little bit different. They, you know, they want uh, a similar size sign, but they don't want to pay uh, $400 or $500 US. It's more around the sort of $300 mark. So it's, it's just a bit of a challenge. And I think um, I'm fortunate that I've built this, um, the, the neon design online because it actually gives these people the prices straight away. So I'm reducing my admin time um, significantly, you know, having to, to get mm. quoting up for people. So, um, mm. yeah, it's just it's, it's been interesting. Yeah. And, I mean, that on the internal side, how, how do you – what sorts of tools do you use to communicate internally to your team? Um, what, you know, you, you mentioned you've got teams in India and obviously you've got team, teams in – those various locations so how do you communicate are you using slack or email or yeah look we, we're using um i use a lot of trello okay. um for my my business here so all, all my ordering um and processing of um, of, of signs you know, i use card based um work through trello yep. uh which allows me to sort of track the um uh, the bill yes. um, um also speaking to my my team over in, um, in india for the, the development as well i use trello for for managing that sort of um uh, managing the defects and cars and things like that as well um, but a lot of it's through communication. I'm on constantly speaking to my suppliers um, over WeChat, um, yeah, Skype. You know, like it's just all about being communication and and, and being available. Yeah. Um, which you know, <laughs> obviously that means I'm available for 18 hours a day. Uh, but you know, I'm there to answer questions questions quickly. Yeah, uh, for my time. Like I've sent out um, remind. You know, I, I'll, I'll be away for a few weeks and. You can get me on Facebook Messenger, Skype, Slack, uh, WeChat, mm. we, uh, you know, WhatsApp, Viber, <laughs> whatever you like. Just, just, just add me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It does become a bit like that. Uh, the constant, uh, constant, different managing of apps and communication between the yeah between apps. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting because I'm. I constantly speak to my accountant and, and things like that in the UK um, through WhatsApp as well. So you know, it's just it, it, having so many different apps to to communicate with people. Yeah. Um, 
along that along those lines like what what's changed over the years for you like ob- obviously you you know you were doing projects with david back in the days of black and white television um you know <laughs> hey, hey. I think it was color when I first started. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> what tech has changed over the last few years for for you in in your industries? Because you've you've been through well, you've been in three industries in the last ten years, more or less. Yeah, look, um, it's uh, a lot of things has uh, has changed for me. I think um, uh, it's just we it's understanding the industry that, you, that you're working in. Um, you know, you can only get that through experience. Um, like when I was in the IT game, my last my last role was for a very high profile um, telecommunic- telecommunications company, and I was managing a, a massive transition project there. And it's just I had to understand it's understanding your stakeholders, which is very similar to what you're understanding with uh, with your clients with regards to the business. If you know who your clients are and what they want, you can produce something that, um, that they, they're going to need. Uh, you know, and that's like I said, pushing into that um, having that neon design on our tool on our website. I understood what the clients wanted. They wanted the price instantly. They wanted to be able to design the sign um, without uh, you know without communication or without having to to call someone to get a quote. So it's just understanding who your stakeholders are and, and, and providing what they need, basically. And that's, that's what I've always done as being a VA and a project manager is through my, um, uh, my tech projects that I've been involved in. Mm. Wow, that's cool, cool. Um, h- how has that affected your career? And how has your career then affected how your family life has moved on? Because moving across to the UK or Europe for three years, takes your young family away from their grandparents and that sort of thing. Look, it, it has been a significant challenge. And um, and while I was still working for our telecommunications company, I was actually working on Australian time, uh, being in Europe and, and, and in, in London. And it, it took a significant toll on me personally, um, being the fact that I was available for probably 18 hours a day, working on uh, having meetings at, at 3 o'clock in the morning and providing training sessions um, at 2 o'clock in the morning and being available for a long period of time. And it burnt me out very quickly. Um, I managed to keep doing it for a couple of years, um, but it's just having not having the ability to speak to people um, when you need them is, is a real challenge, and having that support network is um, is, is was quite tough in our move as well. Um, but, you know, my, my wife, I, I full credit to her. She's an, she's an incredible human being, and um, she does put up with a lot, especially with me with my working because I tend to do it quite a bit. Um, but, you know, she's she looks after the kids and provides that support um, when I need it, and um, you know, which is quite a bit, unfortunately. But um, it's been good for me personally because I've been around the kids. I saw the kids grow up, and you know, I've got a an eight month old at the moment, which I'm always there for her, um, and with, for my um, a nearly two year old as well. It's just been it's been good being being with them um, through this whole process yeah i think when when i had an eight month old and a two a two year old uh, i think i was traveling around australia for a year living out the back of a land cruiser with absolutely no technology <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, and that's that, that is also a challenge having technology there at the moment it is a very big challenge because i'm answering messages while it's also trying to communicate with them and it's it's hard to, to find that switch off point, uh, that time in which you shouldn't be on and you need to focus on the kids. I've really struggled with that with being having the, the IT project while I was running that as well as the businesses. It's, it's been a real sort of um, challenge, uh, which I'm still facing, to be honest, um, trying to switch off and, and, and stay away from devices when you need to. Yeah, there's some um, really interesting articles at the moment about if you don't switch off and you don't have boredom time, your brain doesn't have time to actually think of new ideas. Um, and I was only listening to something um, in the last couple of days, and I have now turned off all my notifications apart from one set of emails and WhatsApp, and I don't look at my phone as much. And it's really interesting to go through it. Normally, I'd be picking up my phone probably – 10 times an hour. I think it's 91 times a, a, an hour. Or so It's just amazing how many people, how many times people pick them up. So if you were talking to someone who was considering going into a business for themselves, what do you think, what do you consider would be challenging for them? Uh, look, taking that first step is always the hardest. Um, for us, uh, it was, we were lucky because uh, 
taking that first step wasn't quite hard and I had the financial backing uh, with my job to support me taking that first step. So, but it's always, it's uh, my first, our first step was to understand who we're trying to sell to. Um, you know, who, who, the, who is your person, who is your, your ultimate client that's going to pay for your services? Um, that's, that's our first, first point, you know. My wife, my wife's idea. Well, you know, it wasn't. She wasn't the only person in the world that thought that same thing. So, understanding what her need was and meeting that need, and then understanding, okay, well, this could probably be a business, and and to run with it was um, taking that first step was quite hard. Um, you know, you you can source anything in the world. You know, you can come up with any idea in the world, and you can find someone that can support you to do that. It's just also spending the time and effort to do that. Um, but you know, there is a there is a client out there that will buy from you. Um, you know, there is an Eskimo that will buy ice from you. So you've just got to understand who that is, um, and then how to target them um, is is probably our biggest challenge. Wow, I've just got one more question before we we go into a couple of other little things. Michael and I talk about the cyber truck a lot, which is the Tesla electric truck. What is your dream car? <laughs> Look, at the moment, I would, I, well, I'm driving a, a Volvo XC90, and I think if I had a brand new one of those, that would be lovely. Uh, that's probably my dream car at the moment because the ability to have uh, four kids and two adults in the car is um, is nice. <laughs> so I think that, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm that fits. Part. Anything that fits yeah. more than six people. <laughs> but look, um, I, I think I, I'm an I'm an old I'm an old school car person. I think I'd love a little MG with, with no roof um, that I could drive on a Sunday with no kids. So that would be my ultimate dream at the moment. So I, I'm the simplest. I, I don't need a big expensive car um, uh, to get to get around. A little classic convertible. How beautiful. How un, unconnected would that be? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. AM radio, yep. <laughs> yeah, no, no iPhone jacks or anything. Oh, God, it would be telling yeah. you. Might even have an eight track in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, we've got three uh, questions that we ask most of the guests that come on. Um, the first one is, what would you do if, what would you do differently if you had a chance over the years? Um... That's a good question. Um, I think, you know, look, I would have liked to have start, started this entrepreneurial side of my brain very um, a lot earlier. Um, I think that because I was so focused on, on trying to produce or create a career um, in IT, I, I really pushed that, that side of my brain to, to, the, to the back. Um, so I think if I was to change anything differently, it would be to, to start that earlier, you know, start that in my early 20s when I've got a lot more passion, a lot more drive and a lot more um, flexibility to uh, to do that. Um, it's, it becomes a lot more challenging as you get older, especially with a family. Um, but it's I think if I could do that when I was in my 20s, that would be the only thing I would change. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people feel like that. They feel as if they've, you know, wasted their years along with, uh, with their career rather than actually endeavouring to go creative and do something new. Exactly right, and I think you know, like I would love to to build furniture one day, but it's it's something you need a lot of time to to do. So, um, you know, it, I think it's just it's taking that first step and saying, okay, I'm not, I'm going to give away that you know my my very hot, lucrative career and saying, let's just I'm going to just do it, you know, and and I think that's taking that first step is very very difficult to be honest, and I was lucky that I could do both at the same time and now give away the IT job. So I'm very fortunate in that that respect. So you've answered my next question, was which is if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? And obviously, a carpenter building yeah, furniture. Yeah, that's, that's my passion. You know, we've we've uh, renovated quite a few houses, and I would love to really love to go and get do, do a proper furniture course, and then and to become a quite a, you know not make some nice chairs and things like that. So, um, but you know, yeah, I, I enjoy. I enjoy building and, and um, just coming up with new things. Like uh, I've got a couple of projects at the moment where I'm inventing, uh, inventing new things, which is also a, a bit of a passion of mine as well. It's becoming seeing something that's that everyone uses on a daily basis and reinventing that is, is something that I really enjoy as well. Um, I'm building a a new. Um, I have built some new light bulbs um, that no one's ever seen around the world. Where they're only the exclusive provider of these things in the in the world at the moment. Uh, where we have. Um, using a flexible filament, we're, we're creating words and names in light bulbs. You know, like this thing, it's never been thought of. And I had this idea three years ago and couldn't find anyone to do it. So it's been that passion to keep pushing and, and find that, uh, that it's, um, you know, and that's, that's what I enjoy. So if I wasn't doing this business, it would be doing some other business, which would be producing things and making new design features and things like that. So that's what I enjoy. 
So, so that, that actually leads me perfectly into my last question, <laughs> which is, do you, what predictions do you have for the, for the future of this industry and obviously in technology and obviously light bulbs with your name written in them are, is, yeah. in, the, in the future? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, we, we pushed in because we, we're dealing with a lot about LED is, is primarily what we deal with, you know, looking long life lighting products. And I think there's, there's a huge market and it's, gonna, and it's growing. And, and to be honest, in the UK and European market, the LED hasn't even hit um, that market. They've only just been forced to stop using halogen bulbs within the past, I think it's uh, 12 months or 18 months. Wow. So, you know, in Australia, we've been we've had LED downlights in our houses for the past five, 10 years. Um, so, you know, there's a huge market over there for, for LED lighting. And um, I'm just uh, trying to tap into that is, is the, the challenge because there's so many people over there uh, with different ideas, different, um, uh, different things that they need. So, uh, but yeah, I think there's this tremendous growth. Um, and, uh, you know, there's... There's opportunities into to billboards and things that we're looking at as well. So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's growth in different ideas. So with um, that change in technology, I want you to tell me how is AI going to change the future of us all? Look, I, one of the things I've been looking into recently, David, is, is a lot around uh, billboard and marketing, I think. Um, you know, because you see big billboards on the on the side of the road, and you don't see a lot of small billboards that you know you can you can see and utilize with regards to AI. You know, you can you can people walking down the street, you can start selling them products that that um, that they want or they're they're thinking about through through the AI technology. I think is where you know is where you could take that. So, um, you know, I think. The AI, for my side of things, I think marketing is 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 huge, um, a huge development area uh, for that technology. So it's just understanding how to use that um, yeah, and tapping into that market. Awesome, because I, I believe we're going to be moving into um, very different homes in the new era as we move out of this uh, COVID nineteen state. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'd like to say thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Um, you have been an awesome guest. <laughs> I don't mind talking about my business. It's fun. I enjoy what we do. So. Oh, no, we're, yeah. we're more than happy to promote your business. Thank you. <laughs> look after yourself and look after your family. And we wish you the very, very best of success in the future. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Jason. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a comment if you see that you want to talk about something. Um, we're always looking for new and interesting people to talk to. So send us an email. Uh, David is on Twitter uh, at Dave with seven, and I'm on Twitter at Michael Lobb, M I C H A E L L O B B. Um, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, David. Like us and comment. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye.